I think I'm pretty much set and ready to go start welding these bit shanks up. I've got the shanks cleaned and the rings cleaned, everything's prepped. With a TIG welder, your metal needs to be cleaned so you can run a good bead and there won't be any air bubbles in there. It's dirty sometimes. If you get the metal too hot, you'll end up with these uh, air pockets that's just impossible to get rid of. It takes a little practice, but um, uh, I took a course one time on acetylene welding and I think uh, a few years later it was that I started TIG welding and it seemed like that uh, learning to acetylene weld and then TIG welding kind of uh, learn a lot that way. I've got um, some extra tungsten here that are, is sharpened and cleaned and ready to go. It's a 1 16th diameter, 2% uh, thoriated, and here's my torch for the sinker wave 250DX, and I've got it set on 160 on the machine there. It's a number 5 cup, the ceramic cup there. Um, for the little stuff, that's about the size I like. I've got this ring shimmed where it's like right in the center of the bit shank there. Um, so I've got that set and I'll start in here and kind of uh, weld that split up there on that ring and then I'll just walk that around and think neatness when you're welding. Try to do it as neat as you can. Uh, examine other welds by other people and for example, a bicycle or a race car frame, you can lace it up that good, it, it's going to look mighty good. Another way you can do it is uh, really just put on a lot of weld and then come back and dress it down and blend the welds. Um, just, you can create your own style and come up with what works for you. rods I'll be using are 1 16th diameter. I guess it's a high tensile strength. I buy them down at the welding supply and they work for all the steel that I use. Uh, I deal with a lot of 4130 or 1018 mile steel and coal roll steel and these rods seem to work real well. And when you blend your welds you can't tell a color difference. And um, uh, I clean the oil off with the rag. They've got an oily film on them to keep them from rusting. side tacked and I'll let that cool just a minute probably wire brushed I'll flip that over and wire brush that other side um, it develops a crust on it from welding on this side to keep the metal clean I'll um, wire brush that off with a six inch soft wire brush on my bench grinder There's a shot of the bead I just ran. That's the first bead. Um, hopefully each time you get a little better, a little smoother and kind of, once you get going, you can get a flow going there. Okay, I've wire brushed the other side of this. Now I'm going to come in here and 
weld that up and come from there weld that seam up and then weld that got a foot pedal that I can increase the heat intensity. My hand slipped. I can't believe that. I had it braced back there on my little finger. I don't know what happened. Okay, that looks pretty good. I've got just a little bit of a uh, hole right there that I'm going to set this up. I've got like a fixture right here that I used to like raise that up so I can see it. Right there, and I'll come back in there and fill that up after I pick it up. Now I've got the shank propped up here sideways. I've got just a little bit of a, a gap there that I need to connect one weld to the other. That's what I'm doing right now. Pretty smooth right there. I'll have to have a lot of dressing down on that. This kind of a work bit anyway. You can take J Flex belts and kind of smooth the weld out where you can even, well, actually blend the weld where you can't see the bead itself. I just welded the rings on the shanks except for the top of this loose job weld those on last after I slide the mouthpiece down on there but I've got the uh, rings welded to the shanks and this is the mouthpiece that goes in this loose jaw bit here and I've taken a square and put me some marks on the top of my welding bench here I suppose I should fix a jig that I could or a fixture that I could just drop these pieces down into. I'll probably work on that sometime. But I took some chalk and marked that and then came back with an ink pen and drew a line right down. And I've got this uh, line right there and right there um, set at five inches. This is a five inch mouthpiece. And I can uh, tell that these tubes are straight. I've got uh, like uh, a little piece of metal right there, like a spur strap. Uh, like the hanger material on each side on the outside and then I've got this prop there so when I hit the uh, pedal it doesn't kind of blow the tubes one way or the other it kind of keep them in position so what I'm going to do right now is just tack these tubes and then uh, take a look at it make sure that they didn't pull one way or the, the other and then turn that over and tack it on the back side and then it should be good to go to uh, go ahead and uh, build up all the way around.
now I'll take a look at this and make sure these tubes are the way I want them and then go ahead and weld them up. 